Number five from the 2009 Iron in the first paper in the multiple choice. Here are two points and here are two statements about it. So this is a multiple selection. I have to decide for each of these statements, one and two, whether they're true or whether they're false. The first one says the length of ST is five units. Well, S would be about two, three, and then five, negative one. So here's S and T. First part, the length. If you want the length of a sloping line, if it's the length of a horizontal line or a vertical line, well, that would be trivial because you'd just be subtracting either the x-coordinates or the y-coordinates. But here, if it's a sloping line, then you'll have to form a right-angled triangle then. How many along, how many up, being the two shorter sides of the triangle to get the distance. So we'd have, what would the distance be then? So st squared would be, what's the difference along the way? What's the difference in the x-coordinates? Well, that would be 5 take away 2 for this part, so that's a 3. What's the difference up and down the way? Well, that's going to be negative, so that's going to be 3 take away negative 1 squared. And that part then comes to 4. You can see straight away it's the 3, 4, 5 triangle. But I'll finish it off here. I've got 3 squared plus 4 squared. Usually as soon as you see 3 squared and 4 squared, I don't need to finish it off. 9 plus 16 is 25, square root of 5. You could just jump in with, so that means that st equals 5. So that first statement then. If st is 5, then statement 1, which says st is 5, is true. So I'll put a tick on that part. The gradient of st is 4 upon 3. Well, since speaking, I've got the numbers there. I've got the distance up, I've got the distance along, I could get the gradient straight away. You may not have drawn that diagram. If I was just working it out from the beginning, I would say, well, it'll be the difference in the y-coordinates divided by the difference in the x-coordinates. So that'd be a 1 take away 3, or rather a negative 1 take away a 3, over a 5 take away a 2. Which gives me a negative 4 upon 3, which is negative 4 upon 3. Now, statement 2 said it was positive 4 upon 3, so that's false. But you could have seen that if you draw a little sketch at the side, obviously that's got a negative gradient, and it would have known that it was false anyway. So, what's true here? 1 is true, and 2 is false, so B, only statement 1 is correct. Number six then, another recurrence relation so soon, only this time, what's the sum to infinity for this one? Well, that's just a case of you could put down the formula. B over 1 minus A, if you remember it, where B is the number added and A is the multiplying number, which would have to be a proper fraction between 1 and negative 1 for it to have a limit. And then you just pop in the numbers. B was 10, A was 0.7, so you've got 10 over 0.3, Multiply the top and the bottom by 10, and you've got 100 over 3, which would do as the answer then. So that would be A. If you didn't remember the formula, then all the limit means is, if you put that number in, you get the same number out. You're stuck at that number. You could write it in this way. Whatever the limit is, 0.7 times the limit plus 10, gives you that same number back out again. Take that across and subtract, and then you've got that number 0.3. 1 take away 0 0.7, 0 0.3 of L is 10. And then finally divide it, same as this. <coughs> number 7, it gives you the exact value of cos x, and it wants the exact value of cos 2x. Well, you won't need a triangle in this case, because when you look up cos 2x, cos 2x has got a form that only involves the cosine, so that's the one you would use. Cos 2x is 2 cos squared x minus 1. So that's going to be 2 times 1 upon root 5, because that's cos of x, squared minus 1. Squaring a fraction, square the top, square the bottom. Squaring the numerator, you've got 2 times, that's 1. Squaring the denominator, root 5 times root 5 gives you the 5 back. So that means you've got 2 fifths take away 1. You'll have to make both parts into fifths. 1 can break into 5 pieces if each of the bits has to be fifths. So you've got 2 fifths take away 5 fifths, which is negative 3 fifths. 
then it's just a case of check checking which one's negative three fifths. That would be A then. So number eight then, what's the derivative of this little term here? Well, well first of all, don't let this put you off, which is the comma, that's just a qualifier, a little bit of small print that says this expression can be evaluated at any number you like apart from x equals zero, because then you'd be dividing by zero. So nothing to do with the differentiation. You're simply going to differentiate that, but it's not ready to go, because to differentiate a term like this, where you've got powers, the variable has to be on top, and the power has to be in index form. So that means these numbers, I've got nothing to do with the power, would stay where they are. I've got a one on top and I've got a four underneath. It's the x that has to go on top, and to show that, I'll have to give it a negative index, but it's still power three. Now it's ready to go. It doesn't matter that it's not got any name. I don't need to give it a name. The technical way you would do that is just to say d by dx of it. Not that you'd be showing that in paper one anyway. So I'm going to differentiate this, which is multiply by the power. So 3 is going to multiply it, so that'll be the negative, of course. 3 quarters. Take 1 off the power, negative 3 drops to negative 4. Put it back the way it was, because we look at the answers, they have them back to the, in their original form. So that's going to be negative of, the 3 was on top, that won't change. That power only belongs to that x, the 4 was underneath. The negative index means the x should also be underneath, and that's just a power 4. So for that one, you have for eight, you have answer D.